Hey toy fans, I'm Tony from Analog Toys and welcome to episode 21 of Palatalk, a retro toy podcast. And uh, I'm quite honoured today to be joined by host, uh, the two hosts of a, a new YouTube TV series that I am thoroughly enjoying. They're on season two. It's the hosts of Toy Shop on Tour. It is Joe and Gav from Hello. Leicester Vintage Toys. How, Hi, you man. Doing, Tony. how are you doing, guys? Honoured to meet us. Is he? <laughs> You're not that honoured, don't worry. It's, <laughs> it's, all, it's all good. I Well, I, I, I do quite a bit of live streaming. I've got a lot of um, uh, American friends with YouTube channels that I do live streams with. And uh, I think this is the first time where all three people on the screen have the same haircut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> basically, it's like people now, if they're watching it, they'll all be going, I tell you what, do you fancy salt and peanuts? Do you fancy salt and peanuts? Because that's what we all look like. They'll all be like, just there, sort of, we're giving everybody the munchies already. Yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> you know, so, something I, I noticed when I was watching your show the other day, Joe, is that um, I've, I've been cutting my hair really, really short for a long time, but I've maintained sideburns and I noticed you do the same thing. Yeah, it's like, it's yeah. like a it's like a, a clutch, like a of somehow <laughs> holding on to some that form last of, stand. Yeah, <laughs> the hair's last yes. stand. Yeah, it's, it's bad. But I do, I do, I do kind of try and keep them. But then um, my wife will often, when she cuts my hair, she'll go, "Do you want them? Do you want? Do you want me to leave?" And I'll go, "Yeah, yeah, I want them like quite big and bold." Mm -hmm. And she just go, "Oh well, they look a bit rubbish. Let's just get rid yeah. of them." You look like so, a like a bold Wolverine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like essentially, yeah. <laughs> Like a really terrible Wolverine. <laughs> like, like the world's worst bold Wolverine. <laughs> oh, AP Wolverine. Who's let himself go. It's all gone wrong for him. If you want to see depression summed up as Wolverine, <laughs> hello, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> well, look, guys, we've uh, we've got about 90 minutes tonight. Um, I did send you through some show notes, and I really want to uh, to discuss your TV show, kind of how it all came about. But I think before we get to that, we probably need to... Um, Take the uh, take the time machine back a little bit further, and try and understand um, a little bit about how you guys got into the vintage toy trade. I suppose. So, where did it all come about? Like, when when did you become a toy dealer and, and open up Leicester Vintage Toys? Um, well, I, I had a I had a um, a son um, through the miracle of you know things <laughs> uh, in nineteen ninety nine. And at that point, oh, I don't know, how old was I then? I don't know, 20s. So I went, I went, oh, toys are cool, aren't they? <laughs> They're not as cool as they were. And I did that nostalgic thing where you look back, and it's often it's rubbish. Toys were just the same, but it's kind of like we look back at things with nostalgia, and then we actually realised we were a, a bit pants. But at the same time, we still want them. We've got to get them. We've got to get them. And that's what I did. I, I had to get the toys for my son. So he was, you know, age three months and i was buying like star wars figures for him <laughs> was this that i'd found and I, I, went, I always liked old things so i was obsessed with old cars old furniture old records uh my brothers were a lot lot my older brothers were like 20 plus years older than me so all their the bits of toys i had which wasn't many because we were from a farming family so we only had a few toys but they were all old toys and i thought these are really cool mm. And that's kind of where it started. So the, buying the toys of my youth and appreciating the toys of their youth was kind of what set me off. And having a son was that trigger that allowed me to buy toys. Because up until that point, you can't really buy toys. I, don't know, I don't know about that. Well, you broke that trend. <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't stop buying toys. No. As a kid, just kept going, going and going and going. Yeah. And then that's how I ended up meeting you, obviously. Yeah. So I, was, I, I, bought, I, bought, I went to an auction. Um, and uh, I bought some toys for a, a pooned because it was a it was in Derbyshire, so it was every poo a pooned, yeah. pooned, but it's not pooned. So I paid a pound, uh, a pound, and uh, there was a thirty p commission charge, which I wasn't told when I went in. So I wasn't very happy about that. And there was some there was two action men with their heads off because they were you know eagle eye. Uh, yeah. And there was some Star Wars figures. I kept them for me. And there was some other bits and bobs. There was a Mego Spider Man with no clothes, which mm. always amused me because you got red head, red hands. <laughs> Normal body, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> always made me laugh. So we, we had that and, and a couple of evil Knievels, and I sold them and made fifty quid from a pound. I went, "Hey, this is cool." Went back the next week, and then bought something for four pound, sold it and got six pound. I went, "Oh," but I still kept going, and that's how. And eventually, ended up in two thousand eight. I worked my way around to the toy fairs and doing everything like that. And then somebody said, "She really should get it shot." And I did. I got a little market stall. And from the market stall, we ended up with a shop. We ended up with three market stalls mm. and a shop. 
and now we're in this shop yes. and we've been here since 2012 so since 2008 we've been going mm. so yeah nice nice cool. and are, are you are you from leicester or like because obviously you've, you've ended up with this vintage toy shop actually in the hometown of palatoy um, well, it's- yeah, but Palito is every. I'm I'm not from Leicester. Gav is. Oh, Gav's, yeah. Yeah. Gav will tell you stories about Friday afternoon Falcons. <laughs> yeah. Um, Friday yeah. afternoon Falcons. What are they, Gav? Oh, basically what they did. I mean, a lot of you guys will know this from Palito Talk. Um, they'd sort of make a few extra Falcons in the factories after hours. Yeah. And they, you know, take them down the pub, sell them a bit cheap. So that's where mine all came from. But it was a lady up the road worked at Palito. All this knocked off stuff, all off the back of a lorry. And that's where most of the kids in my little village in Leicester, that's where all their Star Wars stuff came from. Theft. Theft. <laughs> it was a criminal enterprise yeah. from the beginning. Masterminded. These <laughs> terrible people. No, it was it was Friday afternoon Falcons. It was just basically like, keep the press on, Tony. Yeah. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> get more of these off. It wasn't you, Tony, by the way. You're not. You're not <laughs> we know of. So no, I mean, it could have been. We got, we're going to ask you some pretty searching questions later, Tony. Who was? <laughs> yeah, well, when I was a kid growing up in England, you know, I used to used to go to the pub on the weekend. After, my dad used to play football. I'd watch the football game and then we'd all go down the pub. And there'd always be that guy in the pub who, you know, he'd, cut, he'd have his trench coat and he'd open it up and he'd have cartons of cigarettes and watches. Mm. So I'd take it in Colville. They would open up the coat and there'd be falcons <laughs> yeah, hanging, there's a big falcon <laughs> hanging yeah. down. I mean, there'd be all sorts. Action men, action men bodies, all sorts. There'd be, yeah, mm. just anything they could sell. Because Colville's not a well-off town. And basically it was, it was yeah, it was... Mm. And it's a sad thing. I mean, Palito is one of my big passions. I love Palito. I love Palito stuff. I love talking about Palito. So it's kind of like one of those things I can get quite in depth. Yes. But as regards the shop, uh, it kind of started from there. And then Gav, came, Gav was doing this amazing artwork. Mm-hmm. And he'd been a customer for a while. And he was doing this amazing artwork. And I love that. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is really cool. It's called the Retro Draftsman. And he used to make... Uh, it was basically drawn to scale, technical drawings of the vintage toys. Mm-hmm. And I'd do the oh, measurement very cool. and take the time. Yeah, it was amazing. And, and like some of them, I bought quite a few because I really <laughs> liked them. And then we became friends. And then and the next thing you know, I'd lured him in the <laughs> trap that is Leicester Vintage Toy Shop. And I can't <laughs> escape now. Yeah. I'm stuck. <laughs> help. Help me, people. <laughs> it's bad. And then we made a, we made a, made a, made a silly telly show. Yeah. Which is fun. Well, speaking of your telly show, so I'm really hoping that my audience members are already aware of the Toy Shop on Tour uh, show. It's in its second season now, um, with episodes coming out every Sunday on, on YouTube. But for those who aren't familiar with it, you really should be. It's a wonderful show. It's one of the, the highlights of my week. Um, the, the the links to both your shop website and your YouTube channel are in the description of this video. So please, when the show is over, click on the link. And if you haven't seen it, go and check out the series. But uh We've got a trailer here. Would you like to introduce it, Joe or Gav, or do we just play it? What do we do? I think, think basically, if you like the idea of two bold blokes (laughs) going around buying toys, you'll like the video. (laughs) Press play, Tony. Here we go. This is a trailer for Toy Shop on Tour. Series 2. The return of that TV series that takes you, dear viewer, all around the world as me and Gav buy as many toys as we can and pop them in this van. And this time we're visiting a whole bunch of shops all around Europe. Action figures, dolls, Star Wars, weird stuff, Transformers, monsters, space toys, bootlegs, He-Man. Travelling thousands of miles through Italy, Switzerland, Germany, the Netherlands, Belgium and France. We'll have some rare items and some old favourites. So join me, Joe, Gav and Matt the Cameraman as we take this Toy Shop on Tour. Two.
Let's just put a big smile on my face, guys. Oh. <laughs> it's it's the, little Noah at the end, though. That's so cute. It's the bit with Noah at the end. But I <laughs> I forgot was on there just then. I was like, wait, right, we're back in now. And then and then yeah, Noah came up. <laughs> yeah, bless him. Well, um, I, I I don't know who this spoon jar films fella is, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so good to see my... the trailer still stands up. Uh, it, it it is. It's an excellent excellent trailer. Um, I'm just going to pull up a, a few other quick comments here because. Um, and Telda's channel says it's the best YouTube series. Oh, thank you. Thanks very um, much. Jonathan says, love this show. It's brilliant. So when we, um, when you and I were speaking earlier in, in the week, Joe, over email, kind of sh trying to schedule a, a suitable time, obviously time difference and all of that stuff. Once we'd gone firm on a time, I shared the link. I, and once I had the link set up and everything, I shared it on Facebook, YouTube, and then I, on, on my Patreon. The response from everyone was incredible. I don't think anyone's been, certainly not recently anyway, no one's been that excited about the guests I'm about to have on Palatalk. Everyone was just, they love the show. So, I don't know whose guests are here now, then. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 well, that, well, that's nice to hear from our yeah. point of view. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's cool. We, we, we do it because we I mean, the whole thing with, with toys, the reason why we do toys, mm. the reason why this shop exists, is because we have a, a team of, of people that help out and, and do stuff for us and are amazing. But it's because we love it. Yeah. The reason why we do toys is because we love it. There's it's, no... It's not about the money. It's not about the money. <laughs> um, in fact, one of the Look, questions I asked is, what's, I, I, the best, what, you know, what's the best toy you've bought? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? Do you mean like the best, my favourite? Because it'd be like something... But then the value, and I'm like, I don't know. A lot of people come in and say, like, the word's investment collectible <laughs> all the time. Oh. And they always say, they'll come in and say, oh, what's the best thing to buy for the future? I'm like, we don't know. Otherwise, we'd no. buy it, wouldn't we? <laughs> and plus, just enjoy your toys. Buy what you like. I think that's the best, what we always tell people. The best thing to buy in the future, if you're going really far into the future, is a house in the north of Scotland. Because <laughs> as temperatures go up, uh, Scotland will be a like, nice temperate Place and nice oh, place go. to go on holiday. There That's you go. Very, very oh, in twenty cool. years, in twenty years, Scotland will be the Costa del Sol. <laughs> exactly. Now, as as someone who's been on YouTube for six years and worked very very hard at it, um, I can tell the audience right now that um, you guys were most likely losing money producing this. Well, definitely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know what 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 you invest into it. Um, I'm sure you know you've got people who who help you out. We've all got friends along the way who kind of help us out, but you've got to invest in, you know, pieces of equipment and, and various bits and pieces. Yeah. And So Matt, yeah. Matt, Spoon Jar Films, Matt, who produces um, our, our show and is our cameraman, he um, does it on an, an enormously cheap budget. Now, Matt's a proper cameraman. In fact, one of the last podcasts we did, yeah. he, he was filming something for Bentley Cars. But then he comes and does this passion project with us where yeah. we, he does get paid, but, you know, no, it blows money massively it blows money every time but it's not but we do it because one we love it and it's good advertising for the shop so let's not forget that but at the same time i just think there's so many stories with toys that need to be told yeah um it's like the guys that work for pally toy there's something you know there's there's all these stories that they've got and we've only got a limited time with them there's all these stories that need to be told and it's a way of i don't know i think if you do something um i like to do it as best as i can yeah and one, gonna... one thing you always say if you sort of share what you love you'll find other people who love yeah. that as much as you do yeah and those are the people we want isn't yeah it? so yeah you know, we know with with toys it's all fun and it's all fun and games um but we wanted to bring that to other people to let mm. people know and also make it more accessible so it's not it's not too nerdy hopefully the show because yeah, it's purposely not try and make it fun well, you know, we don't want to get into the old, uh, how, well, what you'll find is this one was, we don't want to do that because then what is the wives, the families, the people don't want to watch it. They don't mm. want to watch it. And the, the toy geeks will watch yep. it, but the, we, we want to appeal to other people as well. Um, so we've got lots of plans in the next year or two for things that are going to mm. come out. So we'll continue to blow money on it. <laughs> we'll continue to have fun. Um, but, we, you know, if we get more subscribers, then yeah. hopefully it will start paying for itself. That's that's the, that's the dream. <laughs> it will never stop paying for itself. <laughs> Such a dreamer. You yeah, really is. I know. No. <laughs> well, you, you, you never know. And, and, and at the very least, if if you guys appearing on this show today, if it even gets you five more subscribers... Uh, it's it, it's right. been an absolute pleasure oh, to finally have you on. So we were well excited. We were well excited. We got your email, Tony. I was like, 
We've got an email from Derek. We're we've, we've made it. We've We're made it. We've done it. We've done it. <laughs> <laughs> this week, this time next year, uh, Rodney will be billionaires. Yeah, absolutely, uh, absolutely. But it's not why we do it. We don't do it. The whole thing with the shop is not no. for the money. It's not for the. I don't even like the sort of. You're you love it, don't you? You love people what? coming up and asking for like photos and stuff. Gabs <laughs> like that. Yes, it, so, it, blo- uh, it blows my mind. We'll go to toy fairs and people are coming up to get photos. It's like what? I'm hiding behind the counter. Yeah. Trying to <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm there. Come on, get in. <laughs> Big bloke hiding behind the counter. Is that Joe down there? Or is it as <laughs> as a as a small country fallen over? Um so yeah, no, it's quite a it's quite a thing. I go, go, going back a few years when my, my channel was kind of still growing, I, I would get that at um at toy shows. Like people would recognize me at toy shows, but not just in the street. And the first mm-hmm. time it ever happened to me. I was um, I was down in down in Perth for the weekend. Um, I was at a work function and I'd gone out after this work function and had quite a few beers. <laughs> uh. Woke up in the morning, came out of the hotel. I had to go to my mother my mother's birthday lunch, and I was incredibly hungover. And I came out of this hotel waiting for my Uber in the middle of Perth City, and this guy just walked took a beeline straight across the street. To what he was pointing at me, walking towards me, and he went, "You, you, you're the guy from Analog Toys." And I've got bloodshot eyes. I'm like, no, not today. <laughs> I've had, I've had a similar one actually. I've had one where I was stood at a urinal, and someone, <laughs> someone <laughs> said, "Hey, you're Gav from Toy Shop on top." I'm like, yeah, <laughs> in the middle of something here. Yeah. I won't shake your hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That you you've got you've got one on me there, for sure. Um, I've got a couple of super chats here. I'll uh, I'll quickly yeah, read I'd these out. So first of all, around that, he'd hung around that toilet for quite a long time, waiting for that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to stop doing that. Uh, expanding universes. Thank you very much. He said, "Have you heard of? Do you have any thoughts on the Action Force Redux comic currently coming up on Kickstarter? It's being done by a company that Lion Convoy works. With. I saw that yesterday. Actually, it does look really cool. The artwork in it is phenomenal. Yes, all the, all the red fellas, all the red fellas. <laughs> That's yeah. what I know, man. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I think it's also um, the the guys behind the Blood for the Baron website, which I've oh, I've yes. got their collecting guide book and that kind of thing. So that, um, that website's always been brilliant. It's one of those websites that a lot of toy websites are kind of out of date now mm. and kind of. But the 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 Blood for the Baron one is always it's always been like sort of one of those things you can just click on and it's just that easy to use. Yeah. And you know I like that website a lot. And I, you know I've, that that's the problem. When I start looking at Action Force. I start wanting to buy it for me. Oh. We've got a you know we've got a, you know I've got a bit of a thing for, for Action Force. <laughs> I need to keep away from it. I've got too much oh. stuff anyway. So no, no, I can't. It's Palatoy, so you know. <laughs> I just like the red and fellas. them red fellas. Them red them fellas. fellas. Yeah. <laughs> And we've got my very good friend here, Scuba Pete. Scuba Pete has been a long-time supporter of this channel. I got to meet him about six months ago. I travelled to the States, and I, I met a few supporters of, of the channel. Um, but I've, whenever I see your live streams, I see Scuba's in, in the chat there. So, uh, Scuba, thank you very much for the super chat. Hey, and happy 50th birthday, mate. It was his birthday the other day. So, oh, happy birthday. Um, thanks for the super chat. He says, Joe and Gav, I'm going to pay you lads a long visit in April. Looking forward to hanging out and buying up the shop. Make sure we're here, <laughs> Scuba Pete. Yeah, send um, us a message in. Send us a message. Let us know because, like, if we we've got lots of plans for next year, so make sure we're actually here. Yes. Um, because although we've got lots of other people that will be in the shop, but you know, we've got all the guys that help out in the shop. Um, we we'd like to meet. We'd you. like to meet you. Yeah. So yeah, let's let, make sure we're here. Mm. Drop Definitely. us a message a few weeks before. All right. So. Um, Hopefully the audience understands you know a little bit about what you what your show is all about. As you've said, it's not. It definitely isn't too nerdy because I'm. If, if, if in your show, if you were like picking up Star Wars figures and spending five ten minutes waffling on about country of origin stamps, I wouldn't watch it either. And I'm a toy nerd. <laughs> I wouldn't. I mean, like that. That's one of the things with Star Wars. It is yeah. like at that point now where I'm kind of like going, is this an M five K? Is this yeah, blast? It's, it's, it's gone too deep. Oh, now. forget it. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't be bothered now. Um, but it's no, I I love toys, so it's just it's just basically it's me and Gav. The first series was in uh, the UK, and we drove all around the UK buying up toys, went to different vintage toy shops. Mm-hmm. The second series takes place in Europe, and we drive all through Europe. Um, and it's um, 
it's it's a, it's an amazing experience. It's, it was an, it it's was a an real amazing adventure. Time. It really is. Yeah, we did yeah. so much. We we do have a lot of fun doing it. A lot of it's very very tiring. Mm. Um, some of the episode four, it, episode four, I think is one of those episodes it shows where you it's kind a of little bit, doesn't it? Oh man, yeah. It was, and it was so hot when we were there. It was oh, so unbelievably hot. Episode I don't, I don't four of series two or series one. Series two, episode yep. four is the one where I think that was the probably my favorite moment of anything we've done. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. Because we go from a I don't want to spoil it for anybody, we go from an extreme low to an extreme yeah. high. And it's and like it's, it's the time out of all everything we've ever done, me and Joe, the most excited you'll yeah. see is over tour. And it was yeah. five hours of driving and it was just I came at this sort of like when you just thought all hope was lost and all of a sudden it's just, yeah, it's just, it was it, on the, when it happened. And we, by the time we did, if you, when we do the toy of the day bit or the toy of the country <laughs> on that episode, it's very We're much sort of like, yeah. yeah, no, that's what it is. Yeah, that's what that it is. Deal with it. Bye. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because we were so tired. It's like, you, you were, some of the days were like, we were doing ridiculously long days, 7 a.m., 6 30 a.m., yeah. right through to like midnight days. And then the next day you were on it again, five, six mm. hour drives and, yeah. yeah, it was kind of crazy, but but the toys keep fun. us going. Yeah, they, they really do. do. That is exactly what happens. The excitement, every shop you yeah. go in, it revitalizes you. Mm. Yeah, and the excitement for getting there, for actually seeing what you get, you know, seeing the toys you're going to see, keeps us sort of mm. keeps it fresh. I can't wait to do the next one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, you're, you're you're making me uh, have some flashbacks now. So because when when I sat down to make my feature length document uh, documentary on Action Man, it was six to tw probably 12 months in the planning um i spent six months kind of writing a script and, and planning it all and i i live in australia so i obviously had to travel to the united kingdom to interview the likes of bob breakin and jeff Maisie and dave barnacle who did all the fantastic artwork and brian turner who did you know the police the action man police motorbike and the sea lion all that stuff but i was also going to be traveling to the vna museum of childhood i was going to be interviewing collectors and i remember i had one month in the UK, and I'd been planning it for six months, and there was not a day that went by in that month where I didn't have somewhere else to be, someone else mm. to meet, someone else to interview, and I was just buzzing around England in, in this hire car. But like you say, the toys kept me going. And for me, it was all, all about, you know, meeting these people who are passionate about... A action Man's my big thing. Mm. I also collect Star Wars, Action Force, Masters of the Universe, but Action Man's my real thing, so... Being able to spend a month talking to like-minded people and 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 forever capturing some of these stories forever on videotape, you know, stories from people like Bob Breakin, um, cherished memory. So yeah, I can I can just imagine what it's like for you guys having to I travel think, around next destination. Yeah, it's the people, isn't it? It's when we yeah. went when we go when we were in Italy and like there's a there's a language barrier. Mm. But the language barrier doesn't get in the way. Like you find yourself, I mean, it's like genuinely some of the shots you'll see like on the on the show as you watch like you'll you'll hug someone because you've just got this you've had this shared moment about <laughs> yeah. a toy and they're going ah yeah <laughs> and it's like italian so it's all very much ah, da, 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 da. and then you're like hey <laughs> and sort of, yeah. everybody's sort of like it's great because that's what toys do the start we all have the same nostalgia we all want to that warm nostalgic glow of of childhood is kind of the the dream we're chasing i suppose and that's what toys do for us and yep. a toy dealer in Italy and a toy dealer in the UK or a toy dealer in America, they might have very, very different. Yeah. Well, that's what we found out. We, we thought we were, oh, wow, sort of knew what we were doing. Yeah. You go to Italy and, and one guy said to me, he said, how do you not know this? This is like my brother. Mm. But he was talking about a certain toy and you're like going, yeah, because it's very different everywhere yeah. you go. And that's what makes it amazing. So, yeah, there's some yeah. amazing stuff to, to, to come as well. So we're excited to not only... Um, series three, but we've got a series two point five planned mm, as well. A little little mini special. Yeah, so we're going to uh, Scandinavia uh, to film in February because it's good to do it when it's really snowy. Yeah, the coldest month in Scandinavia. <laughs> that's that's Joe's planning. <laughs> I plan a lot of things, and Gav just sighs, puts his head in the hands, and goes, "Well, we'll, we'll either yes, no, or we'll, we'll try and make it work." And this is definitely a, we'll try and make it work. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. But it's gonna be it's gonna be great, Gav. Oh, it'll be good. It'll be good. It'll be, cool. it'll be, cool. it'll be, cool. it'll be really cool. Yeah. So yeah, it's, that's what we're doing next. Well, you guys, um, you you knew I had the trailer ready, um, but I've also 
queued up a couple of clips from your show. Um, you don't know what clips I've prepared. I've got three clips here. Um, this first clip, this is from season one, episode seven. And the reason I selected this clip is because one of the reasons I really like your TV series is I see stuff that I've never seen before. And I had seen these toys before, these figures, but never in this packaging. So I'll play the clip and then when the clip starts, you can hear the air get sucked out of the room by my friend Joe here. So here we go. <laughs> now, I'm not sure I'm going to sell it, but I've never seen one. <gasps> oh, that's nice. Oh, uh, man. It is sealed, but the tape's sort of coming away. How much is that? I, I've never seen one. That's, that's cool. These used to be the cheaper end of the scale, but they just don't come up for sale very often. It's five, six years since I've seen one. Yeah, oh, yeah. At least. How much is this? I literally don't know. I don't really want to sell it because I've never seen one before. But Are you open to offers? It depends what the offer is. I don't know either. Yeah. Because I... these don't come up. No. <laughs> You, yeah. you you can see in that your your uh, business brain just ran a mile. And Joe, yeah. was, I've got to have this. I've got to have yeah. it. <laughs> At that point, I, he could have said any figure, and I pretty much should have gone, yeah, fine, because I, I I hadn't seen one for such a long time. Very special yeah. item. Well, and, and speaking of special items, I don't I don't have this clip queued up, but in season two. There's another very special item from the same franchise. Another, yeah, uh, oh. item. yeah. That's that's not such a good end to that story. <laughs> that's a sore point. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm looking at it now. The, it's, it's a bit, the box is lovely. You know, <laughs> <laughs> one of the sort of catchphrases from the show is "breaky breaky." That's all I'm going to say. But all will become clear on episode seven. Yeah, kind of the the recap, catch up episode yeah. seven. Yeah, which yeah. Is, which is this weekend. Are we up to episode? Uh, no, next weekend. Next be. weekend, episode seven okay. is yeah. probably the this Patreon. Patreon, get it this weekend. Patreon people, all, all three of you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, they get it this weekend, and then episode seven comes for everyone else, and then we've got a special after that as uh, well. A very special special, and then we've got a um, a Q and A planned, yeah. which we've not got anywhere near yet but we're going to get to it yeah, so yeah yeah absolutely but that, that black gift set was amazing mm. didn't last very long though did it no it was, it was here for about i don't know less than a week yeah it went to grading when you get those very very special items you know i i i'm i'm, I'm meant to uh i meant to have an item here to to show you guys um obviously you deal in in palatoy action man yeah um one of the rarest sets there is is one of the last sets to ever come out, which is the Missile Assault. Yeah. I happen to have a mint-sealed boxed Missile Assault, which actually came from the collection of Bob Breakin. Yeah. I know they don't turn up very often. I'm sure you're familiar with them, yeah? Yeah, yeah. But they don't turn up very often at all, no. Have you ever seen one in a Meccano box? Right, so we have uh, photographs from when Meccano and oh, Palitoy got together yeah. for their meeting over. So it's a load of blokes in flared suits. Mm -hmm. So we've or got smoking. loads of loads more smoking <laughs> on the set. Yeah. Flared suits, a cloud of smoke. I think like everybody's got weird hair. But no, <laughs> I haven't seen one in a Meccano box, and I don't think there are any that I can remember being out there. No. But there are lots of weird stuff that came from Palitoy. If it's been in Bob's hands. Then it's probably a, a sample that was yeah. sent over. It could be in a. We got off um, Stuart. Uh, Stuart, one of his uh, Stuart, Stuart Moore, yeah. uh, gentleman worked Palitoy. Uh, we got we got some stuff of him a long time ago, and his uh, his stuff was all. We had Star Wars cards, uh, Star Wars card uh, action man cards, and on the back of it was the back end of an X wing box oh, that he yes. cut out. Yeah, and yeah. it was like. I was really cool because I'm like, oh, that's such a cool thing. Mm. And there was quite yeah. a few bits like that. So there's lots of weird anomalies. We also had um, Palitoy. We're planning on doing the, the alien figure mm. that Kenner made. The Kenner alien. Yep. Um, and Irwin sent over a sample for, for Palitoy. 
uh, uh, Irwin with a Canadian branch of yeah. Canada, as you know. Uh, and so Irwin sent over this, and it's a lot different to the Canada one. Different colours, different weird looking thing. Um, it's a bit rough, isn't it? Yeah, a bit rough, rough and rough and ready, like mm. glue marks, and mm. not particularly not 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 as dark either. It's quite grey. Mm. Uh, and we got we, we we've got one in the shop, and it was the one that was sent to Palitoy as a sample, and was found out the Palitoy bins. So there's all this weird stuff that does come out of uh, uh, Palitoy. Um, but yeah, I've never seen one. I, w- I want to see that. Send me a picture of that. Too. Yeah, That's yeah, I'll send you. I mean, the, the actual the actual box. It's the what the Action Man collectors call the Chevron design. Yeah, you know the the, the red, yellow, orange. It, it's exactly the same box, but it's no Palatoy logo on it. It's got Meccano logos on each corner. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's not a you know. It came from from Bob Breakin. It's not an item I will I will ever sell. But uh, I'm yeah. I'll definitely send you some photos, Joe, because I'll be interested. Yeah, that's to, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Yeah. We do need to go. We do need to get our Palatoy box of goodness out at some point for you to bring on and show on the actual show. Yeah. So that's maybe something we can have a proper. Palitoy nerd on yeah, Palitoy geek out. Yeah, it'd be amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, for, for, for the audience, we, we were just chatting a little bit before the show started, and I was saying to, to Joe and Gav, uh, these guys might be the first two people to actually appear on Palitoy who know where the name Palitoy came from. That was the title of the internal company newsletter, the monthly newsletter. And I don't have any originals, but I have a, a stack like that, a photocopied. Um, yeah, yeah. Newsletters that that I, uh, I I think I got them from Brian Turner actually. Um, yeah, so when I was coming up with this the, the, a name for this sort of talk show, um, the, the, this sub series that I have on analog toys, I'm like yeah, Palo Talk, that's a that's a really good name for it. So it is, and the, it all the internal really stuff they did. Um, my favourite thing of, of Palitoy was the boundless optimism of the 1985 <laughs> brochure, um, which is the, the start of it. And we've got two copies of that, yeah. one which is a salesman sample and one which was a standard release one that all the, the take around with them. Uh, the salesman sample was nice. It's got lots of cutouts where yeah, they were making really amendments nice. and stuff like that. And you went, oh. And you're looking at headers as well, and you're thinking, oh. So there was Palitoy, was, Power of the Force yeah, style stuff planned, and, and then some of the Action Force. I mean, we've got some... I'll, I'll show you some of these action force bits we've got, which are a bit different as well at some point. But that's really yeah. cool. But I love the intro because it's like mm-hmm. it's blurting on about how much money they make yeah. and how much how, how strong a company, how strong they a company are. And, and next year, 1985 promises to be the best year. And then, as we know, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love Palatoy. Yeah. They were so flawed as a company, mm. just flawed and a bit of a mess. But genius has worked there. People like Bob, yeah. people like that. Yeah. Were, were genius, ahead of their time, all of them. Dave Barnacle, what a top man he is. And all those yeah. guys, just so, so clever. And we've, I'm not being funny. If they're, if they're watching this, I apologise for what I'm about to say. But we've not got forever with them. So we need to kind of get as much out of them as we can. We need yes. to <laughs> <laughs> believe them. Because the next generation, which is kind of our era, you know, our, era, mm-hmm. our age, is kind of like, there. We, we need to know this stuff because it's the toys that we love. So we want yeah, all these stories. Pass that on. So having something yeah. like this and getting those guys on, doing your documentary, you know, a decade ago was exactly the right thing to do. And we need to do more of it. And that's what, yeah, that's yeah. what we're going to be doing. That's so. what landfill will be all about. Yeah, we do our project and a landfill far, far away, which was what Matt brought to us many years ago. And that's what we started, which was about the buried toys of Pally Toy. Uh, that's something we're going to get back on, hopefully, in the next couple of years. Yeah. Um, it's a slow burn because councils are difficult to move and get them to agree yeah. to things but we've got a guy from the museums who's very interested so you know we can, we can uh, make it work yeah we can make it work <laughs> and we'll hopefully dig up, dig up some buried palatoy <laughs> treasure It'd be amazing well yeah for those in the audience who don't know what joe and gavin are talking about the legend of the palatoy landfill slash landfills um rumors have perpetuated for years and years and years among Palatoy toy collectors um, that there are various dumping grounds around Leicester where Palatoy disposed of, be it excess stock or defective stock, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, I, I know you guys. I, I saw a trailer for um, like a documentary about the uh, the landfill, which I know you appeared in, Joe. When I was first watching, which was only very recently, I stumbled across it in the last couple of weeks. And I was watching it, and I know you appeared in it, but I didn't automatically think you were involved until the end when I saw Spoonjar Films, and I went, ah. Oh. 
That's Matt that the cameraman. Our, <laughs> that was where Matt first sort of met us. Matt Matt stumbled into our shop. He was doing a documentary about Morris Miners, and he stumbled into our shop um, out of his Morris Miner, <laughs> and uh, went, uh, I, "I need a mini. I need a mini or a Morris. Or I need a, I need a Morris." And I went, oh, "There's one in the box." Like really quite rude. I was like, oh, "There's one in the box down there. There's one in the box." And he went, "How much do you want for it?" And I went, "I'll just take it. It's fine." And he went, no, how much do you want for it? I was like, no, 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 I'm fine. I, I, was, I was busy. I was doing something else. I was like, yeah, just fine. And he just went, oh, that was really rude. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he remembered me when he heard the story about the landfill mm -hmm. and then rang the rude man, which I was. Which I, I didn't mean to be rude. I was just busy. And also, I didn't want to charge him for something because he seemed like a nice guy. He was in a hurry. So I thought, <laughs> oh, no, he'll, probably, he'll probably pay on his card. And I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so he went and, um, and then he rang us about uh, and said, I've been, and I was like, literally, I've been waiting for nine years for this phone call. Because, the, I mean, where I'm, we're sat now is in the centre of Leicester. Colville is somewhere away, mm. um, you know, sort of 25 minutes away, which is where the Palitoy factory mm -hmm. was. But lots of stuff was made near here. Um, lots of stuff was farmed out because they didn't have the manufacturing space to actually mm. get this stuff made up. And so they farmed it out. And also when they were burying stuff, which happened right through from the 70s, some of it, the stuff that's buried less than a mile away, a square mile away from this shop, there is stuff buried, and it's all stuff that we can we could get to. I mean, if somebody got a digger, it would be in trouble. But yeah. you know, we've got to do it properly because otherwise, um, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah we'd be in trouble. Council so we'll, permits yeah. and all, yeah. all that kind of thing. Yeah. Hard hats, man with a clipboard. Well, well, you, you, you could do it. You just. Can't make a YouTube show about it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. But and and like there is, and we know people that have. Yeah, when we first started out years ago, there was a guy that came in, and it was all soil covered, like sort of. So we had like lots of um, argyle uh, bits and bobs. So um, action man uh, outfits, part outfits, um, and they were all like covered in soil. And we go, oh, oh, there's a, there's an open seam near my cousin's house. Um, mm -hmm. That guy's passed away now, <laughs> um, but we know where that seam is. Um, but it's not, you can't get to it now. It's kind of one of those ones. There is a lot of stuff you won't be able to ever get to. We'll never be able to get to the stuff at Lount yeah. Tip and things like that because you've been digging through nappies and, you know, you know, tens yeah, of, and, and of, yeah, of 30 years worth of nappies. No, that's yeah. no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, so we're not going to be doing that. So it's not that. It's going to be these seams that have not been built on yet. Because um, yeah. a lot of Pally, a lot of Colville was built on palitoy dumping ground so it's you know it's kind of it's, it's an amazing story and it's one that we we really want to tell and that's something we're going to be hoping to do but that's going to be a long termer um, yeah. but it's exciting it's exciting so and and any regrets being rude to that lovely cameraman that came in the shop <laughs> no he's been it's been brilliant matt matt's an absolute genius oh, um, he, like yeah. toy shop on tour wouldn't be what it is no without, without matt, matt. Because Matt makes yeah. TV quite. I mean, we we we're learning all the time mm. as we do it. Uh, we know now what to do next time. We've been given mm. advice by people, um, what to do, what not to do. Definitely do this. You need to slow this down. You need to do this yeah. differently. So we're learning all the time, um, and that's good because you can. You know, we're not going to get it right straight out of the bat. But Matt is. Matt gets it right straight away, um, yeah. and Matt Matt would say that he's learned things about how to make things better. Mm. Um, but Definitely. I think for me and him, it's been a steep learning curve, hasn't it? Oh yes. But it's been good fun. I'm I'm, I'm sure even you know being a professional, you know, what do you call it? You know, TV cameraman, producer, editor, whatever it is, it's one thing to do a documentary about. Was it what was it? Morris Miners. Yeah, Morris <laughs> Myers. Um, he's done he's done all lots sorts of, of stuff. corporate things. Yeah, lots they? of corporate stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So to to go from that to to toys, yeah, you know. he's running around after us. Well, Matt's a storyteller. When it comes yeah. down to it, Matt's, Matt, loves telling stories. He's, he's a great yeah. storyteller. He's, he's a, he's a, he's a st he does stand up comedy as well. He, did, he won an <laughs> award for that the other year. Um, he's very funny. Um, he sees the fact. I mean, he has to live with me telling the same joke all the time in the edit, and he hates me. <laughs> um, but and he's he's just he's a great guy to have around. He's he's a he's a, a jack of all trades, and he's a he master is. of quite a lot of them. He's one of them people that make you sick. <laughs> He's really, really <laughs> clever, um, but he's a lovely guy, and that's that's why we get yeah. on so well. All three of us, we we we, we do genuinely love each other, even though yeah. me and him aren't friends on Facebook because uh, we don't do Facebook. Neither <laughs> of us. Um, uh, there's no point because we're here, we're together every yeah. day anyway. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's like we do genuinely really care about each other. And um, it's something that I think comes across on screen when we're, yeah. when we're and I'll see, but it that's does. the thing. Look, I, I said to, we had a works do the other night because mm. it was like sort of the end of Toy Spon Tour series two. So I had like a little works do, and I said in I, I did a, I did a speech, mm. and I and I said in in the speech that it was like being with being with your mates and doing this all together. It does feel like it's like being in a band. Mm. It's the only Definitely. thing I'd liken it to is like being in a band, and we're all going for the same sort of thing. And and it, yeah, yeah, fun, <laughs> fun, fun, absolutely. I I think that's a great. Um, a great place in the show to uh, to show another clip. So I've I've, I've shown one clip. I've I've only, I've only picked three. So I picked one from season one. I've I've got a clip that I'll show a little bit later from season two. Um, this clip is from a special episode that came out back in February. Ah, yes. And yeah, sort of speaking of regret, maybe. There you go. Now this, this really is a special item. The Lion-O Thunderwings. This is pretty much as, as hard as you can get really with the normal Thundercats line. They don't come up. This, well I, I've seen one before and I've got a funny feeling about it. Mark, is this the one I think it is? Yes, it's yeah. uh, the one you think it is. Years ago I, I found this with a, with a guy which had a, a weird Michael Jackson collection and a couple of Thundercats and he had this. Um, I think it belonged to a relative who passed and it got handed and I ended up selling it to another dealer. It was Chris Malvin at Metropolis. That's right. And then Mark, I assume you got it straight from Chris. Yes, I didn't want to get involved in Thundercats, um, but he said you won't regret it buying it. So I bought it and then as you can see, Thundercats went a bit mental. Yeah. So do, do you regret it? Uh, no. So the only one with regret in this room is me. <laughs> 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 uh, Chris Malvin, uh, Metropolis Toys. Yeah, yeah. Uncle Chris. In, yeah, yeah. I I can remember first getting in touch with Chris. Do, do, do you remember those days in the nineties when so, the internet wasn't a thing? <laughs> so Alan Alan Hall's books had lots of pictures of Chris's Action Man collection. Yes, um, and Chris. Was a massive action man collector. He's still, re he's kind of gone back to his roots now. He's doing action man again. Mm -hmm. so he's really collecting action man himself now, which is, I, I love that. I That's love the cool. fact that Chris has kind of gone. Yeah, oh, I'm gonna wind the clock back and collect all this stuff again. Um, yeah, yeah. So, speaking of action man, I know I sent you some show notes, and I meant to put this question down so you could prepare for it, and I, I forgot about it when I sent the email through. But um. <laughs> A lot of the shops that you go to uh, during Toy Shop on Tour, I see a lot of Action Man stuff. I don't see you buying too many bits and pieces. So, mm -hmm. as a as, as a toy dealer, what are the what are like the, the the pitfalls and things? What 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 would it take for you to see an Action Man item and go, "I need that for the shop"? To be different. So, if yeah. I show you, um, I'm just gonna. Not prepared this at all. Hold on. <laughs> been hidden under the counter. So, this is a bag that came in. Um, this came only off a guy who's got a neighbour who worked mm -hmm. for Palitoy. And these aren't original bags. These are just bags that we put stuff in. This is brand new Action Man stuff that's never been on a doll. So, we get quite a bit. And these ceremonial bits in here. I mean, it's all sorts of stuff. I mean, it's, it's difficult to show you on the camera. We've got ceremony. These are brand new. These aren't 40. These are brand spanking new parts. We've got heads in there. We've got all sorts. I'll put that away. But the, the, the reason why I showed you that is because Action Man kind of walks in. Mm. Um, and uh, yeah, because it's like something like my our friend Jay, who's a big Action Man collector, massive actually, he's got a huge collection. It's fab, fab, really, really good collection. But because he knows so much, I get a bit lazy. Fan action man, so unless it's boxed or absolutely mint, I kind of go, oh, yeah, let, let, let Jay sort, sort it out. <laughs> and if yeah. I'm buying it, it kind of also has that thing of like, I like to buy complete, I like mm -hmm. to buy mint, I don't like to buy yeah, for the shop, scruffy for the yeah, shop. Yeah. So I'd rather buy all that stuff, I'll just send out to other dealers. Um, so I don't really, I did, I have bought stuff on, on series one, I did buy some mm. action man vehicles. Which actually, I actually sold one the other day, unbelievably. Oh, oh right back there, darling. <laughs> just, just the other three or four still up there at the yeah. top. Yeah. <laughs> we, we do buy it, and I do love it. 
Um, but it is it is one of those lines that's, that can be a little bit harder to shift yeah. in the bigger stuff. Small stuff, great. Yeah. I mean, like, I'll always buy a Tom Stone. I'll always buy a Bullet Man. Oh, yeah. Because I love them. They're because they're amazing. Yeah. Oh, Bullet they're... Man. I love Bullet Man. Bullet Man's the artwork on the box is the box. phenomenal. It's just great. My, Tom Stone is my favourite action man because it looks like me and him listen to the same music. Uh, <laughs> same you, stuff. you use that an analogy for everything. <laughs> no, I just I think it's something. You know, when you see a toy, you go, you know what, we'd get on. Yeah, he's my guy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, we'd probably be able to go. We would watch basketball together. It'd be great. It'd be fantastic. He's my new friend. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you've got to live in that area when your friends aren't really. But I think with action man as well, it's very generational, isn't it? It's yeah, you know, the the people we're getting in now. Yeah, they're kind of. You know, late seventies, early eighties, even nineties now. Yeah, is yeah. coming through. So the action man stuff, it's that little bit older, and there's yeah. less and less people collecting it now. But I, I think, but I don't think so in the late stuff. I think there is, but I think there's so many specialists for it. You get like Star Wars. Oh, yeah. It's the same with Star Wars. It's like if you've got something that's a specialist. Well, they're going to be a specialist. They're going to have all the customers. Like well, for us, we kind of we 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 started off, and that was why I started out really with Star yeah, Wars. I used to, and that was the same for Gav. It was like mm. the big obsession. But because you've been doing it so long, you kind of go, so is it boring now? Yeah. Unless it's stuff We've you've got not... to that point. Yeah. yeah. You know, yak faith. Who cares? Mm. I've seen thousands <laughs> of them. You know, because literally we've seen we've handled thousands of yak mm. faces. But you don't yeah. um but you, the stuff that the weirdest stuff, like I mean that, that C3PO tape dispenser that Gav's got at home now, but that I let him buy off me. <laughs> um that I'm still excited by, but it has to be something different. And I think mm. I feel a bit the same with Action Man. I don't want to see you know, a Talking Commander is a genius toy. It's a brilliant that's toy. Brilliant. But a loose Talking Commander, to me, I just go, oh, that's quite nice. Yeah. But I won't be bothered by it. And I, I now when I'm buying yeah. stuff, I want to be... Because that stuff kind of comes in with collections. When mm. somebody brings in a collection to sell, we'll buy all that stuff. That's it. You, you know, need... if I'm buying, it's almost like I'm buying with that sort of thing. of going, I really need that. I need, yeah. I need that in my life. I want to be wired. And even though I'll sell yeah. it, because it, well, not all, not everything, because I have got my own collection of toys. But even though I'll sell it, Having that wow factor of me and being excited about it means, I suppose it means you can sell it because you're so enthusiastic about it. You love it so much. Mm. You like, you can kind of go, this is so cool because of this. And then somebody else goes, I think it's cool as well. And yep. Gav's weird stuff, Gav's stuff that Gav buys oh, yeah, yeah. in Toy Spon Tour, now loads of people are looking for that stuff Keep because of Gav. It. I've ruined it for myself. Yeah, you have. <laughs> <More wrong. laughs> Honestly. Yeah, I mean, I, I I can imagine Action Man being quite a problematic toy line for for a dealer. You know, there's some very breaky parts. There's a lot of repro stuff out there. Um, but I totally get what you mean. Like when you when you're talking about, you just don't get jazzed about seeing a yak face anymore. No. When I um, I've I've always been into toys. My 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 dad's a collector of Britain's toy soldiers and a number of other kind of die cast metal miniatures. So as a kid growing up, he was buying toys in my local Gamleys. He was buying uh, soldiers. He would buy me something action, man. I'd come home and he would put them in a cabinet in the living room. So I'm like a six, seven-year-old kid going, well, that's what you do when you stop playing with toys. You start putting them in cabinets. Mm. So I just went from playing with toys to, to buying toys. But through most of my teens and 20s, Action Man was the only toy line I, because it's such a uh, such a big toy line. I, I didn't have the disposable income to collect anything else. But by the time I had finished my documentary, I had amassed a quite large collection. I'd spent, you know, a year of my life working on this 90 minute film. And I got to the end of it and I went, I'm going to go and collect $6 million man because I'm over Action Man now. <laughs> and I collected Lone Ranger. And, and that's really how Analog Toys started. I didn't want to have an Action Man channel. Um, I'd done the documentary. I wanted to just have a vintage toy channel and, and talk about lots of different things. Yeah, and my first experience with you was kind of like somebody said to me, have you seen that guy on uh, YouTube, Analog Toy? He's a really cool guy and uh, basically does all Action Man stuff. And the last person that went, oh, Analog Toys, yeah, he does loads of different stuff, doesn't he? And that shows you how perceptions mm. change over that time because yeah. now you like, you know, you, I mean, you only got to look on the shelves behind you to yeah. see the difference. And I think that's for everyone. You As a collector, you develop, I know collectors that have been collecting with us since the start, you know, guys that have been coming in since the start, and I've looked at their collections and I'll kind of know what they're collecting. But you've got that already. And they go, no, I haven't. Go, you have. <laughs> <laughs> and they go, I have. They come back next time. I have got it. I have got it. But they, they change, they branch out. Like there'll be guys that collect. I only collect stars. I only collect loose. 
and now they've got one of the best carded collections you've ever mm. seen, or the collecting loose graded. I mean, yeah, yeah, but, you know, it's, yeah. it's horses for courses. There's no wrong or right. It's whatever people want to do because it's toys, man. It's got to be fun. Um, but it's it's people change, people develop, people also go away from. Like, I've got one mate that does hot toys massively. Mm. So I can't I can't get my head around it. I, I think yeah, they're great, they're impressive, but they're not for me because they've got no age to them. I want to see stuff that's mm. kind of. It's like being a yeah. of a low rent treasure hunter. It's like <laughs> look at it. We can get excited finding a finding a, a Thundercat weapon or a Star Wars weapon mm. in a box of just junk, oh, or yeah. turning over a Lego brick and seeing a Leia blaster in the in the <laughs> upside down Lego there. brick. There is no better feeling. I challenge yeah. anyone. What's a better feeling than that? It's just like that thing of going, oh, <laughs> the excitement of just finding stuff that is treasure is just it's so addictive. It's so so addictive, and it's not finances. It's putting something together. Otherwise, all we'd have is here is we wouldn't have a shop. We'd have a load of stuff. I mean, all we'd do is break Star Wars ships to sell the parts yeah. off. You'd, you'd sell everything as spares because you make more money that way. Yeah, but that's not what we're, yeah. that's not why we're here. No. So you, you you mentioned before that you do have a collection of your own. What's the what's what's the main thing? Like you, Gav you first. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll go give myself a coffee while I've, he does uh, this. I've not really. I've, I've not got. <laughs> any kind of focus to my collecting at all if i like well, it you can see that on the show <laughs> yeah, the weird stuff that that's exactly it it's like if i like it i'll buy it if i can afford it some things you know i love it like there was a um a die x from starfleet the x bomber and it was a modern one modern one in uh, italy and i was like i must have this and it was 300 euros it was tiny but it was beautiful and I was like, ah, oh, it's just a stretch. It's just that bit too much. It was, it was like, it was quite. It was seeing him wrestle with that the mm. rest of the time. What you don't see on camera is obviously mm. all the things that when we leave things. Yeah. And then the worst thing is when you watch stuff back, you kind of go, oh, why did I not? Why buy did that? I not buy that? Yeah. What was I doing there? Why That's did I see worst. that? And you kind of go, oh. And then there's the other things going. Remember you saw this, and you go, yeah. And and quite often in the edit, Matt will go, oh, did you not buy that? And I went. Oh yeah, forgot to go back. Oh man, yeah. I didn't buy that. Why didn't I buy that? Like I saw it in, I was watching back the um, the Paris one, and they had Dolly Pops. Yeah. Oh man, I've been after them for ages. There they were, right there, right in front of me. Didn't, <laughs> didn't get them. But yeah, yeah, your your collection's mad though, isn't it? it oh, is, it's all over the place. It yeah. is <laughs> like, I mean, you need some management, really. <laughs> what you need yeah. is someone. You need basically another version of you that's mm. just a little bit more like going. You know, do you think you're all right? Just be able to kind of go, you know, yeah. But then the other one will start collecting it all, and then it will be two lots of it. Yeah, that's true. Oof. Yeah, <laughs> it's like really being quite not very well. It's isn't like it? an illness. Yeah, it's like it an is, illness. Yeah, yeah it's like a sickness. Toys. It's like some sort of sort of weird. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm addicted to buying stuff for the shop, so my collection isn't as expensive as Gav's because I've always put uh, my family first. It's kind of like where where I am. Um, because like my, my little boy, my youngest boy, Noah, that you see on the end of there, he's not very well, he's yeah. life limited, so he's not going to be with us forever. So, my priority is always like family holiday, you know, because that's that's my plan is always the next holiday for the mm -hmm. family. Um, so for my collection, I'm kind of like I'm very limited, but he loves toys as well, so we, we kind of like collect things a little bit together. Um, but I have uh, Fisher Price Adventure People, he's certainly yeah. up there. Asterix stuff. <laughs> so I was like running around like a lunatic in mm. France, just going, <laughs> yeah. um, and that's one shelf that haunts me again in yeah, Louis Ballou, yeah. uh, in episode six, uh, which will be out this weekend. Is that shelf of things I just kind of you get brain fog when you're doing you do, it. You've seen so many yeah. toys, you just sort of forget. Yeah. Yeah, you do. Your you mind know. just becomes scrambled. Tin, tin. I like at the moment. I'm collecting like I've got a lot of dog tanyan little figures mm. and stuff like this. Yeah, I've just cool. these have come in today. I'm gonna I'm gonna take these out of the box. Sorry, mint and box collectors. They're fairly modern anyway. I don't think anyone will care. No, but you know <laughs> that's the end. And I, I love I love. So I think yeah, I think I'm sort of I'm I'm pretty good. But the things that do get me are things like shop displays. Mm. So, like, there's, there are some things in the shop that aren't for sale, and it's generally shop display stuff because I want my shop to look like, um, like an old toy shop. Yeah, that's the idea. Whenever we're looking at yep. stuff, like, mm. and also I make it I'm bad because I bought him. Oh, a, he did. I bought him a present the other week, which oh, was a fantastic. Uh, it was basically uh, so you know Alf, the uh, '80s alien. Yep. Uh, it was a uh, shop display key ring holder with the frame and the card back and everything. 
and it had uh, and it was full. It had one key ring on every every prong. Yeah, fantastic. It's yeah. the kind of thing that you buy and kind of go, I actually like that myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 you know, I have no because I didn't have a TV growing up. As well, we, you know, I, I don't bang on about that at all in the show, <laughs> um, but I don't have any knowledge of films, and that's what people find weird. I think that's one the is, anomaly yeah. with me that everybody come like Gav really like he's into mm. films, he's into all, all the pop culture, all the pop but culture. You're in it purely. You know the toys. I know the toys. You know it's, the characters from yeah. the toys. I, so I don't. Somebody will go, yeah. it's not cartoon accurate, and I go, I love <laughs> it. Not, it's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> I like the toys. You yeah. know, I'm going. It's not cartoon. I have never seen the cartoon. Um, and I don't have any. I don't have any. I suppose I don't have any love for the cartoon. I mean, I like Star Wars. It was a good film. Uh, I don't know if anybody else noticed that. It was quite a good film. Um, <laughs> it was alright. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I, I, and I did, I did get very excited by that, and I got excited by the Mandalorian when that came out, and the, the subsequent shows have been okay. Um, but I don't. I'm not a big telly guy, uh, so I'm, I'm a toy guy, and I want to actually physically see them mm. and hold them and cuddle them yeah. and look <laughs> after them and then send them somewhere else. And it's like. You know what? Years ago, I used to work for the RSPCA, which is the uh, Royal Society for Protection of Cruelty to Animals. And when you'd rehome a dog, you'd be very much like, so what makes you think you're suitable for this dog? <laughs> and, uh, you know, how, how big is your fence? And I'm a bit like that with toys. How big is your fence? Uh, you know, <laughs> yes. uh, when, if you're going to rehome that, then it, that's a special item. Not everything. If somebody's going in to buy a Lego set that's fairly modern, I'm going to mm -hmm. go, ah, thanks very much. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. money. Um, but if it's something where I'm going, this is... But like know. if someone comes in for that Irwin alien... Oh yeah, that's going to have to rehome. We, we've turned it's going down, to have to go to the right person that one. We've turned down more than that was on the price tag at <laughs> some point because I was just like, nope, not because yeah. I, because I wasn't ready to get rid of it, and also I kind of like he wanted a can of one. I'm like, can of one will be cheaper, yeah, and this hasn't got one. the history. Because, oh no, I just want a can of one. I can get a repro thing for its head. I'm like, no, <laughs> it can't go. So it's had to stay with me. So yeah, so yeah. like I say, big toy enthusiast, rubbish businessman, you know. <laughs> Something I've definitely picked up on through the show is uh, you you really seem to have a thing for Transformers. Uh, am I right? Yeah. But I, I, for the shot. Yeah. Big hands. No idea. Tiny toys. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> no, I'll call you that one. No. <laughs> Can't blame me for that oh. one. <laughs> this 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 is not toy shop on tour. I can't edit this out later. This yeah, is no, live. No, <laughs> they just they just made me chuckle. That um, yeah. <laughs> no, I have got big hands, and I can't transfer. Like now, if somebody said, uh, uh, "Can you transform that for me?" I'd just go. Is there someone else here that's available? Because <laughs> I'm rubbish, but I love them because I didn't like them as a kid though, because I had big hands. I'm a big guy. I've always been a big guy. You know, professional. Professional yeah. fat man. This isn't something I've worked on. This is professional professionalism um, that you see here before you. So, but I couldn't transform them properly, and I used to break them. So I was like, "No, these are rubbish. These are not for me." And then, as a as a as a grown up, you know, which is kind of where I am now, nearly one day. Um, <laughs> then I kind of got into them and kind of like was like, "These are amazing. These are so cool." And my love for them has just increased. But I don't have. I think I have a. I have two on my shelf at home, and that's it, because I'm very good. And they're both Diaclone, so um, yeah. Diaclone. <laughs> Watch the adverts. The adverts are amazing. If you get YouTube like, Diaclone adverts, they're fantastic. They are some of the best toy adverts I've ever seen. The Japanese Brilliant. Transformer yeah. ads, man, the, the, the stop motion. The, yeah. So ahead of their time. So yeah. ahead of their time. I, I went down a, rab a rabbit hole of, of yeah. Diaclone uh commercials about five years ago insane yeah and you fancy a late night watch some diaclone adverts and get lost yeah. in because they're amazing um but yeah. they're and and i think it's that and i think it's the fact that the toys were so good when the guy went back to hasbro and the same guy that uh, designed the johnny seven one-man army so from topper yeah and that guy when he went back to hasbro and went you need to buy that you need to have these these amazing japanese mm -hmm. toys you need a, a vehicle for this so create i mean they created a cartoon because the toys are that good that's how good transformers are yeah. and i might be mistelling that story slightly but it's kind of around that but yeah. that's how good they are and that for me that that makes that that i don't know anything else like that not that i can think of that's yeah, how good definitely. transformers are so even if i didn't <laughs> like them i'd be wrong <laughs> <laughs> I'm I, I'm known as that guy who's uh who's not a fan of Transformers, but I can still oh, you're appreciate. Wrong. Deal with it. <laughs> I, I, 
I can still appreciate other people's passions for for, for stuff, you know. So I'm not, modern, I'm not into the modern ones at all. I'm not. Yeah. If somebody brings me a modern Transformers collection, in, I'm like, if only if it's cheap. Yeah, <laughs> and there's some, <laughs> some value in them now. Yeah, there well, is. Yeah. yeah. So like toy, my toy dealer mentality. Like literally, we've been going buying a guy's vintage stuff off him, a lovely guy called Gareth, who's a really good friend. He's a really nice guy. And he brings in his vintage stuff, and he's like, oh, I want this much for that, that much for this, that much for this. And I'm like, yeah, okay. A bit tight, but yeah, we can do that. And then he'll go, and I've bought you these as well. And there's like a bag full of modern. And some of them like 200 quid each, and he just went, oh, you can have them, because I know you don't like them. And I'm like, oh, well, let me just give you something for them. Let's round it up yeah, in the deal. Yeah. So we pay him strong money for his vintage, because we can get enthusiastic. But the modern stuff just sits around and... Mm. It sells occasionally. You go, oh right, we made some money there. That's yeah. that's like that's a business decision. Although the modern probably sells better than yeah. the vintage now. But the I, Transformers. I've never let that <laughs> never let that get in the way of a bad business deal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm a, I'm te- I, I am the guy that when the Eagle Freighters came, um, Product Enterprise did the modern Eagle mm. Freighters. You know, sort of 15 years ago, however long it was, 20 years ago, yeah, probably yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and when they came out, and we were buying different things and and and. You would make more money out of the Eagle Freighters sort of like 10 years ago, let's say. You'd make more money out of the Eagle Freighters rather than the dinky ones, which you'd get 100 quid each for mm-hmm. boxed. Whereas the Eagle Freighters from Product Enterprise, you'd, you'd get 150 quid. And um, I'd always buy the dinky ones at the same money. Yeah, because they were cooler. Because they were cooler, because they had age yeah. to them, because I liked them more. And that was always one of the things you kind of go, yeah, I'm not very good at this, <laughs> but I know what I like. And I like the older stuff because it's cool. But that's Absolutely. just me. You know, but everybody's different, so they're not wrong. Yeah. It's just we're all different. But Everyone I know what I like, their own thing. I know what I like from my shop. Yeah, yeah. So, so what is um, if if you cast your mind back over the last twelve months? You know, we've we've, we've come out of this long period of lockdown, and you, you're back out on the road. 2022. What is the best selling vintage toy line at Leicester Vintage Toys? What what? You know, Masters of the Universe, Transformers, Star Wars. What, what what's your what's the most stuff that walks out the door in the last twelve months? This this week, Masters of the Universe, because oh, yeah. that shelf can't be any left. All my life but it I looks think terrible. We've kind of got to a point with the shop that everything is sort of equal yeah. now, isn't it? At one point it would have always been Star Wars. Yeah. But that seems yeah. to have dropped off now. Like during lockdown and you're just after heavy Star Wars. Yeah. Crazy. But now, yeah, yeah, it's it's very equal. Same with diecast, mm. toy cars and stuff, because we sell like everything. So if somebody bought a railway collection in, we, mm. we'd probably trade that now. But years ago, we'd, we'd stock railway as well. Um, you know, for people that really get really into the whole yeah. voice and but talking like that and just, train spotting. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, it's always always your heavy hitters. So Transformers, He Man, Thundercats, yeah, tra- yeah, turtles that, a little bit, turtles, yeah, just because we've had some nice ones in. Got I think. Some lovely turtles. <laughs> yeah. in. We've got an awful lot of um, carded uh, turtles sat behind us, actually. Um, but yeah, so yeah, turtles uh, has been all right. All the big, yeah, yeah, but it's, it is all the big hits. It's kind of, but I think if we if we went, I mean, if if there was such a thing as doing like some sort of adding up mm-hmm. of that and, and separate everything up, I think we'd be quite surprised by what we sell in mm. modern toys as well. We don't really do, we yeah. don't specialise in, but they sort of drift in. Yeah, uh, so modern action figures. We've got this system where we box the foot. We put them in little clear boxes. Yeah. Um, Just loose figures in little boxes. Yeah. And yeah, they trickle out. Put them in little class cases like this, and they sell quicker than a card of one. You can have a card of one at the same money. Somebody will buy this. It's yeah. always a bit weird. Yeah. Um, and that can be anything. Random figures. Like, yeah. You know, you'll have a Pirates of the Caribbean figure next to a vintage G1 Transformer in that lot. Yeah. Yeah. We just it's like a it's like a smorgasbord of uh, of uh, old toys basically. Mm. So it's quite cool. You can have you can spend a fiver and get f- three wrestling figures, mm. or you can spend fifty quid and buy a G one Transformer that we've got one of in the cabinet already yeah. that we just put out in the yep. box. So yeah, that's that's they they shift, don't they? Those little units. So oh, yeah, they're and they're a mixture. So I don't know. I don't, really don't know. No, I don't think there is one one thing. I that think really sells increase wise. The thing that we have seen is wrestlers. Oh yes, over the, the past uh, past couple of years. Yeah, Hasbro. Yeah, okay. yeah. Mm. Definitely Hasbro wrestlers or Hasbro. People keep going. They got any Hasbro? And you go, well, so and for a lot. Well, we've learned to know what they mean now. Yeah. But when they were first coming, you got any Hasbro? You yeah. just stare G-R- at them like, G.I. Joe. What, you, what, you, what kind yeah. of Hasbro are you after? They've done quite a few toys. Yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was that thing that generated that term of Hasbro's. Yeah. 
that that anno- I think that's toy dealer snobbery. Things yeah, like I think people go motu, 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 motu o. Yeah, as the new one is. Yeah, the new one. Master the universe origins. Motu o. Motu o. It's like it's like really is that what they're saying? Yeah, that's yeah. just we got that a couple of times this week. You got any Moto? Yeah. <laughs> but people, people, there's a comedy show in the UK uh, called This Morning with Richard, not Judy, years ago, and they used to call it Tumurunja because that's yeah. what the kids were calling it, Tumurunja, as a joke because people would abbreviate things to make it. Sound but now like, it's actually but now it's actually happening. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's kind of it is weird, and we we get things. Um, it's not a toy dealer snobbery as well. Uh, somebody walks in here uh, and says Legos. Legos, all oh, no, over. Don't like Legos. That's the thing. Or Lego. No, it's Lego. To us, it's Lego. Yeah. Uh, it, and then. Yep. Yeah. I'm I'm with you on that. It's Lego. Yep. I'm still not sure if it's Mego or Mego. Mego. It's definitely Mego. I like Mego though. Yeah, but Mego is what was his name, wasn't it? Is it? <laughs> yeah. But he should know then, shouldn't he? <laughs> so, so, so the story goes. Um, the the Abrams. Uh, when they were coming up with the the name for the company, uh, whenever I, 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 Marty Abrams, I think took over later. Um, so who, Marty Abrams' dad. So the story goes is that whenever he would want to go on on business trips, his son would say to him, "Me go too, me go too," you know, because no. he would want to go with him. And apparently, that's where it comes from. So it's, oh. for me, it's always been me go. Yeah, me yeah. Go I've never heard that story. That's, that's cool. cool. Really? Like that. Yeah. Okay. I don't know his son was Yoda. I'm going to catch up on a couple of super chats here before we play the uh, the final clip that I've got queued up. So, Scuba Pete again, thank you very much. <laughs> Can we talk about Gav's Cabbage Patch obsession? Oh, Brian. Specifically, <laughs> we, Brian. Not this again. I love Brian. Not this again. Brian is... I had a lot of the little vinyl figures. The Cabbage Patch kids, the big dolls were expensive as a kid. So we could we only afford the little vinyl figures, and one of them, little yellow one, I'd named him Brian. Me. He was my main guy. <laughs> he was he went everywhere with me. He was the main one, you know. He had a little yeah. voice and everything. His own character. Did, did, he was actually northern. He had a northern <laughs> accent. <laughs> Genuinely. But now he whipped and pay attention, Brian. Yeah. So and now you know every time I see you know the same Cabbage Patch kid, it's a Brian. I have to have it. So is he not actually called? This is new. No, to no. Me. The first one, my one, was Brian on was the box. Called Brian, Brian the box, okay. but they all had different names. But yep. that's Brian to me now. <laughs> but it's not really. Again, it's not really a toy name. It's like I think that, that you know the, the <laughs> oh, one I always reference is Voltron Keith. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah. Really yeah. That was what was it? great though, because it was Brian was an eighties name, and they all had very eighties names, didn't they? I don't know. Yeah, because they all had birth certificates. Oh, I, I just love Cabbage Patch Kids. Yeah. <laughs> That's one thing that hasn't passed on to me, I'm afraid. <laughs> I mean, I think, like, carrying around, like, because he looks a lot like you, Gav. Yeah, now, maybe. <laughs> like, looking into... I've, a, I've become Brian. A very small mirror <laughs> into the future. I yeah, like yeah. Brian with his bald head. <laughs> yeah. It is... Uh, it and, is uh, uh, Envargo97, thank you for the super chat. He says, just stopping by while on my way to work. Looking forward to catching this later. That's one of my regular American viewers. So um, I know it's a little bit early. So I'm very much hoping that um, I, I've, I do have a uh, the vast majority of my audience is in the United States. So well, hopefully um, we're not alienated within the Legos comment because that's yeah, an American that's where thing. That's yeah. come from, yeah. It's the Legos. But people say over here. And in America, it's kind of acceptable. We're not going to go to America and go, actually, yes. I want to think you'll find this. <laughs> yes. We're not going to do that. You're saying that's wrong. Because <laughs> Series 3, we're going to America. So we can't go and go, Yo, you're the people that were against Legos and therefore get out of the country. <laughs> so we don't want that. So we, we're going to accept it over there. But it's when British people going, you want Legos? Well, it's Lego over here. <laughs> yes. You, you, you can't just drop that in con- to conversation and ride right past it, Joe. Series 3, you're going to America. Oh, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> just we've told everyone, haven't we? Oh, we have told. And everyone. on that bombshell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So we're going. We're going to. The, the idea is, and it, it might have to put it back because we're going to Scandinavia next year. We've got a specials, uh, quite a few specials lined up, and we've also got a new thing that we can't talk about yet, which we're hopefully doing, which we haven't told anyone yet. About. About, we've only just told Matt. Yeah. Um, so we can't really because we haven't planned that thing. We can't tell you about that. But we might be going to because we're doing Scandinavian next year. Yeah, and, in, at and start of the year, it's, we, it's very much financial, isn't it? Yeah, with America, we can't afford to do America till twenty twenty four. The pound needs to get a bit off its backside and get a bit better against yeah. the dollar. 
because at the moment it's getting its bum we want, that was meant because America was meant to be the yeah. very first toy shop on tour that was yes. a dream man yeah and then COVID. <laughs> exactly. yeah. yeah but you know we did the kickstarts back then and that helped to buy all our equipment yeah which we've been using I mean, we've got flights still we've got flight yeah. vouchers still for America we've still got you know mm. at least three flight vouchers that are still in uh, so we could still use towards but everything's gone up yeah. so it comes down to finances we can't you know we have to keep the business vaguely solvent yes. vaguely solvent so, and because we're doing Scandinavian because we're doing the specials and because we've got this new thing we're doing as well um, then uh, we might be doing 2024 might be series 3 but we've got series 2.5 coming which we're hoping to have out for April somewhere around mm -hmm. that in the thought and then we're going to have a number of specials and we may have something else along the way <laughs> But that's still very much in development. Yeah, there's, there's also we definitely yeah. want to go back to Italy at some stage. Just we to go back to see Leo's warehouse. Unfinished yeah. business because there's so many things that you like, and, and other people have got in touch going, oh, I've got this, and you yeah. go, yeah, really? That's the thing. And just, then just going back to that, when we went to see Leo, it, it was the first stop yeah. on the whole trip. And we would have bought so much more. Yeah. Because we had so many more shops to come. Thought, yeah. You know, better yeah. hold off a little bit. Because I'm thinking about tolls, fuel, yeah. um, food, everything that everybody needs to do when you're away. And you've got a budget for that. And then you've got a budget for toys. And like, yeah, I could have spent the entire budget in Leo's yeah, basement yes. um, in, the, yeah. in the back cave. Um, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not going to try and take that ice castle back and get a refund, are you? <laughs> I mean, like, that's the, that's it'd be, it'd the be even worse by the time we get it Yeah, back. it will be. <laughs> I think, to be honest with you, I think it was slight. If you look at the actual show, the way it's, yeah. I'm, I'm going, so this is a new one. And Leo says, uh, it is broken. And it, but I go, but this is a new one. And he goes, uh, yeah, but it is broken. That's, but that's, what, that's what they say over there. They say, it is new. And they mean it's never been, never out, been of the box, out of the box, never been played with. But it, but it is broken, is what it was. Yeah. And Leo told me that, and then I go, okay, and I buy it. And obviously, if I if I'd known it was broken, I'd want, I'd kind of want to get it out of the box. But yeah. I, I don't want to see it. But the toy joy, the excitement, oh, got too much for you there, yeah. didn't it? But I do love it still. I don't regret it at all. I don't regret it. It's, it's you know, I mean, like, yeah. Well, I mean, it's meant to be in episode seven. We kind of blow the cover on this, but yeah. yeah, it's completely broken. But I think it got worse on the way back because when breaky breaky that term. Very true about that yes. ice castle. That is that is probably apart from a couple of the gold plastic transformers. There's a generation two jet, which is horrendously Ooh, breaky. Yeah. Uh, like all the joints are gold plastic. You're like, <laughs> rub yeah. <laughs> We've got a, we've got a card of one in the cabinet down there. Um, apart from that, I can't think of any toys that are more breaky than that ice than castle. that era than that ice castle. Yeah. That is horrendous. And this one is the box is mint. That's all I'm gonna say. I'm gonna keep one if I, if I ever sell it. If I ever sell it, if I ever sell it, I'm gonna tell him that the box is lovely. The box is lovely. The box is lovely. Don't look inside. <laughs> well, it's it it's not it's not just a mint box. It it's beautiful artwork on that box. It, that, yeah. that, that is it, it it is a work of art. You know, it's, it's a, the reason why I keep we looking, keep at, looking at, at it. Yeah, yeah. 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 You kind of get lost in things when we're talking about stuff. You kind of go, oh yeah. Mm. And they, it, it is it's amazing, and that's that's something I think that the whole thing about toys from the from that era is that the artwork oh, sold the toy, it did. and sometimes the toy yeah. does not meet the demand no, of the, the artwork. The toy could be rubbish, but you'll see it on the box, and it's like, oh, I can do this, I can have this adventure. Even if that Black Star Ice Castle wasn't completely smashed to pieces, it would still be a rubbish toy inside that amazingly beautiful box. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And there, there was toys that weren't. I mean, the Master Universe uh, mm. Grey School was amazing. Um, I, I, State Mountain, though, rubbish. Rubbish toys. But it had the talking head. <laughs> like, so you got the talking head thing, so you sound like one of the uh, cricket commentators. So, <laughs> um, you've got the talking head thing, and then you've got like the breaky, the shackles, forget it, they're always broken. Then you've got the, yep. the, the, the rails that breaky, the toy itself. Uh, yeah, but the face on it's really cool. It's, yeah, and again, <laughs> yeah. that comes down to an artist. And I bet you when they drew that, they were going, it's going to be like this, it's going to be like this, yeah. and then they were going, well, it's going to be quite expensive, let's mm. uh, put this in and stuff. And, it, yeah, it's so you feel like Sector's Hive, terrible toy, but I love it. Huge, yeah, huge, huge toy. Huge, but <laughs> yeah. that, that, as I prove, is not necessarily a good sense of, uh, of, sense <laughs> of how good something is, just because it's yeah, big. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
and the sector's hive is, is a bit pants. Uh, and but I love play sets, so for me, I all these toys I talk about, mm. but I say, Oh, it's rubbish, well, I still love them. Yeah, there's a love, yeah, love there's still that love there. It doesn't matter that it's not very good. I, I like car wise, I like old Citroens, and what I like about them is, is the fact you can kind of go. Yeah, I know why it's broken down. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you kind of go, yes, yeah. I'll mm, wait. I've I got to understand. I've got to face it in the sun in the morning. That's the. I actually had this conversation again. The problem is when the sun comes up, it's facing the wrong way. Therefore, it won't start. That's <laughs> stupid. But at the same time, I still love them, and I'm going to buy another one. Um, so yeah. <laughs> so there's, there's just because it's rubbish doesn't mean to say it's not amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, TJC, thank you for the super chat. He says, uh, just because, great stream, got to go back to work in a moment, so we'll have to catch the replay later. I'm really hoping, um, well, in fact, not hope, I, I, I know a lot more people will, will go back and watch the stream later in the day again because of the American audience. It is, what is it, <clears throat> just after 8 a.m. on the East Coast, but it's still like 5 a.m. on the West Coast. You know, I've got, I've got uh, some friends oh, yeah. like, uh, that side of the world so you know they'll, they'll they'll pick it up um over the weekend but um the third clip i've got here i didn't want to I, I wanted to share the wealth i didn't want to all have clips of joe because we've got three handsome bald men on the screen we need to have a clip of gav um <laughs> <laughs> so this clip is from the latest series it's from episode four. Oh. What oh, country were you in in episode four? Um, Germany. 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 Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I selected this clip because it was just two really, really cool toys that, uh, that Gav talks about. So here we go. Speaking of masters, we've got a really beautiful laser light. We saw one back in the shop yesterday. We need to talk about him. Look at the condition. Beautiful. But that's not what's excited me. I mean, yeah, it's a really expensive figure, but this is what I like. In fact, yeah. We've got a first shot prototype of Stone Dar. I had to check it wasn't rock on, Stone Dar. Look at that. Just a test shot. They never come up. That's really nice. That's gonna be expensive. <laughs> that was cool. Kieran. Kieran Ball says here, Gav's World, world of Weird. weird. <laughs> that, that, that place in Germany, when I, when I was watching that episode, that blew my mind. Yeah. Yeah. The Got sheer it. volume of insanely rare stuff. You had the, um, yeah. the Masters of the Universe mailer boxes, the, 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 the graded Star Wars you had in there, like the Yu Who glue stick packs. Yeah. The, the, like, yeah. Tri logo bits, the yeah. the, the weird oh, European variant, everything. the mass of the universe with the yeah, just stop, just just, and I, I you don't see and those eagle, the, the guys that are pausing amongst this sort of like mm -hmm. stuff are going like, is that that? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. that. There, there's you know, there's so much stuff in that oh. in the back of that shop. Andy at Strong Vision in Germany, that shop is unbelievably good. Unbelievably yeah. good. But you go in, and I remember walking. Yeah, you walk in. <laughs> <laughs> you walk in. I've just seen Matt's comment, and what did Joe buy a paint drop? <laughs> I know. Because if you can't afford to buy the amazing stuff, you because basically silly. it was the prices that we could have sold it for. And it, I mean, we don't make any money when we make the show anyway, but we, we try and have that vague pretense that we're going to make <laughs> yeah. some money out of the toys when we get back. And some of it we do. We do very well mm. out of. But we're never enough to pay for the show. But yeah, I bought a painted rock because if you can't buy the most amazing thing in a shop, buy the silliest thing you found in the shop. And that was rubbish. But I don't regret it one bit. Oh, it is rubbish. <laughs> it really <laughs> is bad. <laughs> but yeah. But no, it's an, ama an amazing shop. But when you walk in, it doesn't seem like it's going to be that amazing. Until no. you start digging in the cabinets, it's kind of like quite... It's very modern looking. Modern looking. There's a lot of... Uh, it's a great shop. Gaming it's, stuff. And yeah, there's like a whole gaming section, yeah. which we so don't really cover. I walked in, I was immediately like, oh... Yeah, because you were uh, really excited. I was really excited up. because it was like, oh, yeah, I've seen photos. But that's it. But then as soon as we got out the back. And then, and then and then you got out the right side of the shop. And then it was like, wow, there's some really cool yeah. stuff here. And then he says, I suppose you want to go in the back. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and then, oh, my life. Yeah, that's the gold. 
I mean, yeah. it's when the guy from Variant Villain just turns up there yeah. as well. He's like, where have you been hiding? I've been in the back. You know, the guy from Variant Villain who's like this expert on and knows far more about any any yeah, sort of Star Wars thing than I do. Then it's kind of like, yeah, this is a proper, proper setup shop. This is this has got everything that we, you know, we're oh, we're just two idiots winging it, basically. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, it's 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 an amazing shop. Well, look, we've um, we got a, we got a few minutes left. I don't want to keep you guys too long because I know you have a shop to run and you've actually uh, closed the shop for a little bit um, to be able to. Your honor. In your mm -hmm. honour, Tony, we've, we've done it. We've, we've had a couple of disappointed people walk away, and a few relieved wives. They're <laughs> yes. like, you know, they're, they're the enemy of the wife. They come in and the, the women go, they're closed. Yeah, <laughs> men go, oh. Um, but but yeah. yeah. So in in the in, in the last few minutes here, um, I, I wanted to kind of wrap up with it with, with a couple of questions. First of all, um, to to each of you, I want an answer from each of you. A highlight. From season two, what's like your favourite moment of Toy Shop on Tour season two? Going to be the same one. I think it is going to be the same thing. Cushion Mushel. Yeah, it's episode four, Cushion Mushel. We don't want to spoil the episode no. because so we won't talk about it. Can't too talk much. about it too much. If but... you haven't seen the episode, it is just that. Yeah, this is what I was saying about earlier, where you've never seen two grown men get so excited about toys. I nearly cried. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, it was that. It was, it was that kind of thing. It where was one of just... those. It's like I say, it's a rare find. Not particularly the toys, but the shop itself. One of those rare finds that you don't find shops like that. No, anymore. Yeah. Off the beaten track, yeah. kind of like just with stuff that's obviously been there a long time with dust and and and, and also, I, I just think it was the high of of going from that. And because you've got to remember, when you're driving five hours from Strong Vision, you're seeing these amazing toys. And we did, but as that toy dealer in me was kind of like going, I didn't get to buy much, yeah. even though I bought that amazing rock. Amazingly rubbish rock. I'm kind of driving for five hours, and I've been to, we've been to Such and Find as well, which was cool. Mm. But then five hour drive, and traffic, and then stress, and then thinking, and I'm thinking all the time, thinking we're not going to get an episode out of this yeah, if we don't it. finish this today. We this need to finish happen. this today. So then we're trying to make contingency plans, and Andy from Strong Vision was trying to make all these phone calls yeah. for us. Yeah. All this other stuff's going to be on the scenes. We're going right. Okay, what, what, what if? This doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. What do we do? We've driven five hours off yeah. off track, and it's kind of there's all this stress going through your head of going, the finances of it all, the working out, the timings, all these other things. We're trying to work out, and then you'll see, you'll see what happens. Yeah, and yeah, it's unbelievable. exciting, <laughs> unbelievable. <Couldn't laughs> be, uh, yeah, it was kind of yeah. I, I was in such. He, he was in a terrible mood. Yeah, <laughs> he really oh, was. I was <laughs> Oh yeah. Anyway, we won't, we won't spoil it. But yeah, that 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 moment. I think both of us will answer the same. Yeah, on that. it is. That was the yeah. hot point. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so series series one were kind of like half hour episodes um, yeah. where you where you're traveling around the UK. Um, I really like this, this season. It, you know, they're they're close to hour long episode, roughly hour long episodes. Yeah. Kind of an episode per country in Europe that you go to. That real long form content that uh, I, I think you've picked a great time to uh, to publish each episode as well. Sunday viewing, as I said, for, yeah. for me with the time difference, it come it, it comes on YouTube about eight o'clock at night. That's kind of just, I, I, I get up for work pretty early. So that's just as I'm getting, getting off to bed and the wife's watching some absolute <laughs> cack on TV, like the Kardashians. I just put my headphones in with my phone. I was like, I'm going to chill out with Joe and Gav. <laughs> oh well so that's not but that's what we want we want mm. to be a companion for you know for people we, at the end of the day we want everyone to be able to get some enjoyment out of it and we have quite it's been quite nice to actually get that that aspect of families being able to watch mm. it there was a little kid that yep. met gav and me uh, when we did like a, an event and mm. he was shaking he was so excited because yeah. he'd seen the show wow. so by, Jelly, yeah I want to, you know, this kind of like you want to. These, it's, that's adorable, man. Because we're just yeah. two folks that are just. Yeah. We've done something we enjoy, it, and the fact that other people enjoy it that makes that's us happy. What's nice about it, yeah. So yeah, we want other people to continue enjoying it for as long as we can. But, yeah. yeah, good. Um, and and so do I. I. I wish you guys all the success. I can't wait to watch the rest of season two. I can't wait for season three and everything else you've got. You've got planned the the, the Palatoy landfill stuff. That sounds great. 
I will say that for me, the, the mark of a really good show on YouTube is that now, now that I've, I've watched an episode once, I can actually, when I get in my car and, and drive to work, I don't like listening to the radio. I, I often listen to uh, toy-based podcasts. So long as I've seen the episode before, so I've got that, the, the memory in my head of you know the, the toy you're talking about, I can actually just listen to your episode as I take the 40-minute drive to work. You can that's listen the, to the mark of a good TV series. So, Oh, that's really kind. I mean, you can listen to it and just go, well, that's wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I do. I listen to it back and yeah. I go, oh, so that's that's, that's why we have the editor. That's why we have the editor now <laughs> yeah. who picks up most of them, but we still some get oh, through still because get through, yeah. we only got so much time to make the show. We only mm -hmm. have like Matt has works extremely hard trying to edit the show. That's the main thing. We have all this mm -hmm. stuff. And then the, Matt trims it down to get it down to you know what is a watchable yeah. thing. And then there's always something where we've kind of like we missed something. There was in this. There's a couple in this series where yeah, even the editor didn't get ones, it. Yeah. The moron. Yeah. Told you it was overpaid and overrated. <laughs> the editor. Absolutely. Um, Kieran Ball here says, <clears throat> "Aren't Joe and Gav the UK's answer to the Kardashians?" <laughs> <laughs> The 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 Kardashians. Joe's got the derriere. Yeah, I have. Um, is that is that the woman with the big bum? Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> Joe doesn't know. I don't doesn't know. Do pop culture. I don't do pop. Are they pop culture? Well, Does that count? I don't know. They don't look very cool. They're popular. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they're not. They're not my bag. Um, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's. Um, Oh, there you so, go. There's Matt. Yeah. Up. You've got Manu saying, um, last, the last episode of series two is Lulu Baloo in France is worth waiting for. So for those who don't know Lulu Baloo, I, I've, I've, you know, when I make my videos about vintage toys, I always try and make videos about toys that I actually own so I can film stuff myself. But there's always, you know, you might be referencing another toy or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing online research, and if you if you go online and and search for a picture of like any vintage toy, the amount of times a photo from this website yeah. comes yeah. up is insane. Yeah, um, I'm I'm looking for. So how many episodes in season two? There is there is there is six. only six on the road. Um, okay. It's the same uh, amount of, co of content as the first one. But, yeah, you know, longer episodes. Longer episodes. Longer episodes. Yeah. And then, and then seven. There is seven, which is a sort of look back, and, and then wrap the, the wrap up of kind of like what we bought. So basically, it's an unboxing video. Me and Gav getting back to the shop, <laughs> yeah. and taking all and it's the last thing this. that we did. I mean, like it was, we only filmed it uh, probably a, yeah before everything before we bought. bought everything we bought we left it down in the cellar yeah and, until we could film this episode with us taking out the boxes. So we'd forgotten yeah. about a lot of yeah. the things we bought, which was really so it was, nice. It's cool. Like revisiting yeah. all these things. It was cool. And all I found memories. there's actually something in the van which has never made it out of the van since Toy Tour, oh, wow. um, which I found the other day. I went, oh, I need to bring that into the shop. I still haven't. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there is bits that we bought yeah. in, in, the, in the Netherlands where, um, where, where it hasn't, the Space 1999 figures are still sat in oh, the van. Oh, yeah, yeah. And that box, that outer box. So it's like quite cool. But yeah, yeah. it's... Uh, well, look, guys, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to come on the show. Um, please, we, we've got a couple of minutes left. Take the opportunity to plug your website, your show. Where can people find you? Um, all of that good jazz. Well, the website's not very up to date. No, is it? but you can get you can get to everything <laughs> through Via the, the website. website. So if you go to lestervintage.co.uk, we don't have all the all the toys no. in on the website. But we do have the links to everything. So all our social media is on there. There's a page for yeah. Toy Shop on Tour on there. You can watch all the episodes. So there's, there's, that's definitely the go-to point for everything. There's probably about 1% of what we've got on the website. Oh, yeah. Um, and yeah. it's not got much on it at all because basically we're just too busy. We make a telly show, man. Yeah. Uh, and, we we uh, have big plans for that website. And then we did a TV show. and we did, <laughs> we did, Yeah, we have all these plans. And Gab built the website. And then we kind of like, mm. uh, but yeah, it was kind of, uh, it's one of those things that we, but the the things on there, the contents on there, so you can get all the episodes through that, and you can click on all the links. Yeah, and you can contact us, you can message us, you can yeah. do everything through there. You can even so, ring us, Sarah. Yeah. Okay. Lestervintage.co.uk. Or even better, come and see us in the shop because uh, that's the best thing. To you know, yeah. the kettle's always on, particularly yeah. over here now. Because 
it's flipping freezing really in cold. here. It's really, really cold. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I have heard you say it's the uh, the coldest shop in England. So <laughs> it is the coldest shop in Britain, definitely. It's, yeah. yeah. We have a the cellar. Everything just flows through, but it is better than it used to be. Uh, finally, Samuel Edwards, thank you for the super chat. He just simply says thank you, guys. So uh, yeah, much thanks, appreciated. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Yeah, and like I say, get in touch. We're always happy to uh, yeah to come and chat toys and chat toy on tour. And we're we're we'll even happier when we're back out filming again, which will start in February. So we'll be back out yeah. filming in February. But yeah, Amazing. look for that special. The toys that you'll see on Boxing Day will blow your mind. Oh wow! Because it certainly blew ours when we filmed it. Yeah. So that special that comes oh, out Boxing Day. Is That's very special indeed. <laughs> if you're a toy fan, it. <laughs> it doesn't lend itself quite as much to the sort of like the everyone family watching it because it is very geeky. Yeah. Um, but it is it's very toy wise. Episode, yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's like hordes of small children singing. Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> it's fantastic. Excellent. I'm thoroughly looking forward to it. Well, Joe Gav, thank you very much. Um, to my audience, the link to the toy shop on tour to the, the the Leicester Vintage Toy Shop, their YouTube channel, where you can watch this excellent series. The link to that uh, channel is in the description below. Please go and check them out. Give them a like. Give them a subscribe. Um, it's a wonderful series. Um, it, it's, it's the kind of thing that really should be on TV, but in this day and age, it's on YouTube. Um, but hey, you don't need a TV license to watch YouTube, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, guys, thank you so much for joining me and uh, everyone in the live chat. Thank you for being here, and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thanks, bye. everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>